Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about wrist pain in yoga and I'm going to talk you through a few different things that you might be doing wrong in your practice that might be contributing to wrist pain. So if you're looking forward to learning about this today then make sure you give the video a like by clicking thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. If you click the bell then you'll get a notification whenever I post a new video like this one. So what is the most common mistake that I see people making when it comes to their wrists in their yoga practice? Well, whenever we're bearing weight on our hands, which is typically quite a lot in yoga, especially if you have an Ashtanga style practice, we're on the hands quite a lot, then you need to be very particular about the way that you place your hands down. And uh, some of you might be familiar with what's colloquially in the yoga industry known as Hasta Banda. Hasta means hand and Banda is like a lock, an energetic lock. So you're probably more familiar with Mula Banda, Udiana Banda, Jalandhara Banda. Um, but Hasta Banda is kind of a jokey name that people give to this position of the hands that's ideal when you are bearing weight. So I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like now and the mistake that you might be making um, if you are experiencing wrist pain. So whenever the hand is on the floor in yoga and whenever we're bearing weight, you want to make sure that the fingers are spread wide. So having the, hand, having the fingers together like this doesn't give you the maximum spread of um, weight distribution across the hand and that can be one contributing factor. So if you're just placing your hands down on the mat like this, try spreading your fingers and keeping the fingers vibrant and active when you're uh, bearing weight and that already should give you a little bit of um, relief when it comes to wrist pain. The second thing is you want to try and imagine that you're actually gripping the mat with your hands. So the way I think about it, when you're correctly doing this hasta banda, as it's known, it's almost like the whites, the tips of your nails become white because you're exerting a little bit of force, a little bit of pressure on the tips of the fingers to grip the mat. And again, that's a really good sign that you've got a strong connection to the mat and that the distribution of your body weight through your arms and your wrists will be well distributed and supported by the position of the hands. And thirdly, what you can imagine is pressing the base of each finger and your thumbs down into the mat. Um, and what this does, it gives you a really good connection to the mat so that you can, instead of just allowing your weight to dump down into the hands and the wrists, you're actually meeting the body weight, meeting your body's weight by pushing back. So you, yes, the body weight is traveling down, but you're also exerting a force down into the mat, which creates this energetic lock, this man banda. So when you have two opposing forces, equal and opposite, going kind of into physics and Newton's laws here, but when you have two opposing forces that meet each other, that are equal, then you have um, an equilibrium. So that means banda, that is what a banda is. It's when the energetic forces around a specific point in the body are equal and it creates this effortless, eff effortlessness and lightness to whichever position you're in, in which case when we're talking about the wrists, it creates this lovely sense of stability and strength in the wrists. Let's have a look at those points in a little bit more detail. So my first point was, if you are placing your hands down on the mat like this and bearing weight on your hands like this, then that's almost a guarantee for wrist pain because this is not a very strong connection. There's no activity in the hands um, and the weight is just being directly sent down through the wrist joint. So instead, spread your fingers wide. And here the position of your, the, the rotation of your hands is a little bit fluid and will depend on um, the shape of your shoulder joint. So most people find that it's, it feels okay to point your first finger upwards so that the crease of your wrist is parallel to the top of your mat. For those of us with slightly stiffer shoulders, sometimes opening the hands up like this, so further turning the hands out can help. But generally speaking, look for your wrist crease to be parallel to the top of your mat and spread your fingers wide. So that's step one. Step two is then to start to grip the mat with your fingertips. So what that looks like, instead of just having the fingers relaxed, actually push down through the fingertips. 
So can you see there that the tips of my fingers under my nails go slightly white because I'm exerting a force? That's the kind of effect you're looking for. Um, I'm exaggerating a little bit here, but you get the idea. You want to have that connection as if you're gripping the mat. So my, then my final point was to think about pushing the floor away with your hands. Always, always, when you're bearing weight on your hands, it's not just sinking down. You're meeting that force of gravity by pushing the floor away. So what that creates is this energetic lift, this banda in the hands that helps to support the weight of the body without putting too much pressure on the wrists. So these tips were fairly fundamental in terms of how to safely bear weight on your hands when you're practicing yoga. But let's say that you think you're doing all of those uh, actions correctly, but as you're learning some of the newer, more advanced postures, arm balancing postures like Bhujapidasana or um, Bakasana, um, and maybe I'll just put a diagram of Bhujapidasana here for those of you who aren't familiar with the pose. Let's say you're starting to learn this posture and you're getting a little bit of wrist discomfort. One thing that you could look at doing, if you're already practicing all of those techniques with Hasta Banda, one thing you could try and do is not to go so far into wrist extension. So it's probably, if you're experiencing a lot of discomfort, it's probably just that you're going too far with your level of mobility, level of flexibility, and your muscles just aren't ready to, to bear weight and to activate at that range of motion. Maybe just film yourself doing the posture, doing Bhujapidasana or any other arm balance where you're finding it uncomfortable. And then I want you to bring your wrist out in front of you and have a look at your active level of wrist extension. So here we're not bearing weight um, at all. We're not pulling the hand and the fingers back. So this is really my active wrist extension level. That means it's the, it's the degree of extension I can create myself with my muscles without any external force. So if I were to push my hand back, I could create more extension, but my muscles can't pull themselves into that position. And often when we start to bear weight on the hands, sometimes we push our wrists past our active range of motion. And that can be what causes the discomfort because the muscles are not able to respond actively to support the joint in that new range of motion. So it's not the end of the world. It just means that you have to dial it back a little bit and very gradually increase your active range. So some of the, the, the best things you could do would be to increase your range like this. So actively pull your wrist into extension and just do a few rounds and you can hold for a few seconds. Um, and do this before your practice, or at least before you practice those arm balances or any postures that are giving you trouble. And just practice going into extension of the wrists without using any external force. And that's gonna really fire up the muscles in the wrists um, to support that new position. There are also some really great um, functional exercises that you can do for your joint health of your wrists. So if you, um, not familiar with uh, C-A-R, CARS. Um, these are controlled articular rotations and it's a way of increasing your joint rotational um, movement ability um, using only muscles. So again, you're not kind of twisting with an external force, you're actively controlling the range of motion in a joint. So uh, if you're not familiar with them, just have a look on YouTube or on Google and try some CARs for the wrist, C-A-Rs, and that again will help to increase your functional mobility and strength in the wrists. I hope these tips are gonna be useful for you in your practice. If you enjoyed the video, then please give it a big thumbs up, click like below, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you click the bell, then you'll get a notification when I post a new video. If you have any questions at all, make sure you just leave them in the comment box below. And I look forward to seeing you here next time for my next tutorial. Thanks for watching everyone.